All right, everybody, I've seen your tweets, I've seen your comments. Here we go. We're checking out One Tree Hill. Now, for a little context here, I graduated high school in 2006, and One Tree Hill started in 2003. So it was one of those shows I was actually the prime demographic for, but I just never watched it because I was probably too busy watching Space Jam for like the 47th time, because I mean, come on, guys, Lola Bunny. Hello? But anyway, so here we are in 2019, and I think it's finally time to be honest and ask ourselves, why did everyone like One Tree Hill so much? Let's take a walk. So One Tree Hill stars Nathan and Lucas Scott, two half-brothers, who were completely different, but they both love basketball. Nathan plays on the high school varsity team. He's like the captain or whatever, just having a grand old time living out his father's dreams. And then we have Lucas, who would one day go on to start his own cult, but that's a different conversation. And he, of course, also plays basketball, but he does it on the streets because he's a bad boy. Now, the show starts out with Nathan playing some, like, big basketball game at school or whatever, and his coach is, you know, being like this. You guys are stinking up the place! Man, that's a 10 to 2 run. I don't care if we're up by five or 50. I'm still the coach, it's still my team. You know, I really have to hand it to whoever did the casting in this show, cause like, how do you find someone who looks like a supervillain from Batman the Animated Series? That's really something. Anyway, so at the last second, they win the game, and like any group of high school kids, decide it would be a great idea to steal a school bus and almost run into a train. I mean, let me tell you, early 2000s were a heck of a time. So they get caught by the police, and long story short, over half the team gets suspended, which basically leaves the school without much of a basketball team at all. And as you might imagine, parents aren't too thrilled about this, especially Nathan's dad. And he's got a couple choice words for Coach Five Chins over here. So you just walk away. Half the team suspended, Nathan triple team the rest of the season, and you say nothing. The inmates will not run the asylum. You're despicable, you know that? Letting the dreams of this team just vanish. You're full of crap. Oh, good heavens. Can you believe they put this on television? Anyway, so flashing sideways over to Lucas for a moment, he goes to his mom's cafe, and we meet Haley, his self-proclaimed best friend. And I think I'm starting to realize why he spends all his time outside, like, anywhere except here. So, honey, how was your day? Good. Thanks. I mean, good as relative, right, considering a third of the world is starving. Which does not change the fact that I'm clumsy as hell. Did I tell you that I fell down today? Yeah, slipped off the curb, totally bit it, face down, butt in the air. <laughs> really? Too graphic? Sorry, I'll just... While this is all going on, we cut back to Nathan, who's trying to get his girlfriend Peyton to hang out with him and all his basketball friends. You know, every girl's dream. And here's where we get a little taste of what kind of guy Nathan really is. So I waited for you tonight. Yeah, guys wanted to tip a few. Well, that's why I came by. You wanna come? With the guys? And me. And the guys. Whatever. You, you know what? You want to be a bagel? That's cool. Just sit in your closet, listen to your loser rock, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Peyton, who do you think you are? Liking music and having hobbies. But don't worry, guys. I'm sure Peyton's got a great comeback just ready to go. Just sit in your closet, listen to your loser rock, and I'll see you tomorrow. How about you don't see me tomorrow? Yeah, okay. Let's let's work on that a little bit later. Now, the next day, Coach Grumble Grumble takes Lucas out of whatever he's doing and brings him to the gym for a little man-to-man -man talk. Look, I've got an opening in my lineup. Varsity. Chance of a lifetime. <laughs> okay, coach, let's not oversell it now. It's just high school basketball. I mean, come on, look where you ended up. But then Lucas turns around and gives us the weirdest answer. God doesn't watch sports. Uh, so is that like a no? Or are we just gonna circle back in a couple days or something? Like, what? So Lucas goes home and talks to his mom about what happened. And we find out that the reason he doesn't want to play on the high school team is because his mom doesn't want to deal with Lucas's dad, aka Nathan's dad, and all the drama they had back in high school. You're a good kid, Luke. Sometimes I feel like you're sitting out your life on account of me, and I don't want that for you. My past is not your future, okay? Now this brings me to a point that I will evangelize as often as I can. Leave your hometown ASAP. Trust me, being stuck with everyone who remembers every time you farted in English class or whatever, it's not worth it just because you got some memories. If high school was the best time of your life, you're doing something wrong. Now Nathan and his friends hear about how the coach is trying to recruit his half-brother, who of course he and his dad want nothing to do with, so he heads on down to the park and tells Lucas what's up in the only way that high school boys know how. Nice shot. Can you hit that against a double team? Down by two? Packed house telling you you suck? How about just two people telling you you suck? What do you want? What do I want? What do you want, man? Psh, well, that's a dumb question, Nathan. The same thing everyone else wants. A Gargoyles remake. But I mean, what's that got to do with this conversation? Anyway, so basically Nathan's like, You think you're better than me? All right. One on one basketball. Anytime, anywhere. And then Lucas is just like, Oh yeah? Well, I... 
don't have a comeback for that, so... <laughs> or something like that. And then Nathan walks away like this, which would probably be more intimidating if his clothes weren't like five times too big. Anyway, the next day, I think, Peyton's car breaks down, and Lucas, who also works at an auto body shop, shows up to help her out. Now, they end up sharing a moment, sort of. God, why are guys such jerks? Guys or Nathan? Him. You. I don't know. We share the same father. Yeah, I heard that. Now, talking with Peyton over here gives Lucas an idea. So he goes and tells Nathan when and where he wants to do the whole one-on-one -on -one basketball thing. Now, flashing forward a little bit, just before he faces off with Nathan, Lucas is up on a roof with Haley, having another heart-to-heart -heart talk, because that's like 70% of this show, I guess. Do you think I'm being selfish playing Nathan? Do you? A little bit. I mean, if I walked away, then my mom wouldn't be downstairs worried about it now, now would she? You know, I don't say things like this very often because it sounds weird. But, like, in the movie Frozen, Elsa lives in a whole castle made of ice. So, like, where and how does she go to the bathroom? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm trying to imagine it right now, and I'm just feeling all kinds of uncomfortable. But then it's finally time to go play some basketball. But just before everything goes down, or, I don't know, whatever people say, we learn that there's actually a little bit more at stake here than just who's the raddest dude at school. Are you really that threatened? I'm not threatened by anyone. Well, then why do it? <laughs> Prove that I'm the best. Okay, and so what if he wins? What does he get? He gets you. sure it works that way. Also, I love how her reaction is just like, oh, okay. You know, that's the thing about going back to watch some of these older shows is like, there's always just one or two things where you're just like, wait, what? Anyway, so they play basketball and here's a real shocker for you. Turns out Lucas wins at the last second. So now Peyton is required by law to be his girlfriend because like I said, early 2000s, I mean, it was just the wild west. But in the very end, Lucas shows up to join the varsity team anyway and the coach gives him this really creepy look. And then, you know, they get in a bunch of wacky adventures for the next nine years. Yeah, seriously, this show went from 2003 to 2012, which makes it one of the CW's longest running shows ever. And like with most of the other older shows I've taken a look at, it's always interesting to me, at least, how the main premise of most shows from this time, it's really simple. Like, I don't know what it was exactly, but there was just this period of time where you could have, like, a smash hit primetime show for years where nothing happens. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, okay? I'm just saying, like, if you wanted to have a hit teen drama back in the day, it was just like, so, uh, this guy's dating this girl, and then they have a fight and break up. So he starts dating this girl, but then in the season finale, we find out they're actually cousins. So he goes back to the first girl, but then a new girl shows up and this just goes on for like 10 years but like can you imagine if they tried to make one tree hill today okay so lucas is a uh, half vampire half teletubby and this is bad because as everyone knows vampires and teletubbies don't get along very well ever since that one day 5,000 years ago when the teletubbies took a vampire baby and threw it into the freaking sun but I mean, all that being said, I guess I can see the appeal of something like this. I mean, it's a show about cute boys playing sports and expressing their emotions. So yeah, of course a bunch of girls are gonna watch it, you know, looking like... <laughs> You know, there really is something about these older type of shows, and I think every time I do one of these videos, I probably say the same thing at the end. There's no real story in most of these older shows, right? You know, you look at One Tree Hill, Dawson's Creek, The O.C., Gilmore Girls, Seventh Heaven especially, like some of these shows that were like really popular back in the day, some of which went on for years upon years. I mean, Seventh Heaven went on for, I don't know how many years, but it went on for a long time, but it's like a lot of these shows are just about nothing, you know, <laughs> like, like nothing, like nothing really happens. It's just like, it's just characters going through life. And I know I said this in the video and like, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. In fact, I actually think it's kind of refreshing in a way because every show nowadays has like this mystery and this person has magic powers now. And there's, all, there's so much stuff. I mean, from the early 2000s up until I guess what, 2009, 2010 ish, that's when we started getting like Vampire Diaries and Twilight came out and, and then everything kind of changed then. But before the big shift over into everything being vampires and zombies and stuff, like shows were so simple, you know? It's like you could just have a show about people dating each other and breaking up for nine years and that could be an entire hit show, you know? And then Twilight came and just destroyed everything. So with this video, you know, I kind of want to take things a little bit easier than last week. If you're new to the channel, you know, maybe you're not aware, but check out last week's video. I think it's one of my best videos I've ever made, honestly. Um, and that one took a long time. It was six days to make it and it, I, it was somewhere around 80 to 85 hours, I guess. You know, as most of you probably know, right before it came out, it got blocked and I had to do this whole thing and there was a live stream and all this stuff I had to do. So this week I was like, I just wanted to take a breath. I still wanted to put out something 
something that was good. You know, something that's still like my usual quality, but just maybe not quite the same as the perfect date video or whatever, you know. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me because, you know, I mean, you never know. A video could come and go at any moment because that's just how things work, I guess. Follow me on Twitter. Let me know what was your favorite part of the video or just say hi or tell me what movie or TV show you want me to check out next. Follow my dog Charlie on Instagram, Charlie Meets Pumpkin. And above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.